Now we will look at the OAuth example in practice. So we take up the example that we've worked at before with the email scheduling app as the client and Joe as the resource owner who wants to access his emails using Gmail. Now, how would we go about and do that in practice? Well, I've prepared a little script of what we need to do if we would be the provider of the email scheduling app. So here's our script of the things that we need to do. First, uh, we can have a look at the documentation of OAuth 2 provided on the Google Developer website. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is part of the Google Identity Platform. And here you'll have a lot of description on how to use OAuth specifically using Google. All right, so you can read through this if you want to. For this example, it's not really required. But what is required is that you have a Google account and that you have curl installed on your machine. So curl is a tool I will include in the lecture notes some cheat sheets. It's a command line tool that you can use in order to call APIs. And that's what we really need to do in this course. Curl is available on all machine types. It's available on Windows. It's available on Linux, on Mac OS. So you can find that using a Google search curl for your machine, a little command line program. All right, so first step is actually not really on this slide here, and that is the registration of our email scheduling app. Registration has to be done on this web page here. It's the Google Developer Console. All right, I already have a couple of apps here, but we'll create a new one. Your screen might look a little bit different because Google keeps updating that all the time. So just click somewhere on your screen, there might be create a new project and might look a little bit different than that. So now we call this email scheduling app. Create that thing and it's working now. All right, so now we got a new project, the email scheduling app project. First thing we need to do is configure our APIs and auth. So let's click on APIs and authentication. And here we have APIs. Because we want to have access to the Gmail resources, we need to have enabled the Gmail API. And that is what we can do here. So we just search for Gmail and enable that API. Google does that for us and there it is, it's enabled. Next thing in the registration is credentials, All right? We want to have an OAuth configuration. And for this OAuth configuration, we need client IDs. That's what we can do here. We can select different types of client IDs that we want to enable. Here they are shown as web application, service account, or installed application. Well, what's the difference between those? For the web application, you have basically authorization code flow um, or implicit flow, and here you have a redirect. So now we've created our email scheduling app on Google. Next step is to configure APIs and authentication. You can just click on it, open it up and go on APIs. And because Gmail is our resource server, we now need to um, configure the Gmail API and we need to enable it. So we just type Gmail, Gmail API and enable it. Okay, and there's our Gmail API enabled. Next up is the very important step of configuring our credentials. So we click on credentials and create a client ID for OAuth. And here's our OAuth 
Google configuration. What does it say? Auth 2.0 allows users to share specific data with you, for example, contact list, while keeping their usernames, passwords, and other information private. That's exactly what we want. So let's click on create new client ID. Okay, more configuration options. What kind of application type are we actually using here? Well, it's either a web application, a service account, or installed application. That depends later on on the security mechanisms which are used. But for our little example here, we can just go for a web application accessed by browsers over a network. Well, great, that's very simple. What we need to do is we need to fill in authorized redirect URIs. So you can put in several redirect URIs, but what's pre-filled is already good enough for us. We just need to have a simple redirect URI. Later on, you can put your web application address basically here. Okay, and then we click on client ID creation. It's going to think a little bit, and here we have our client ID for web application, client ID, client secret, redirect URI, JavaScript origins. Perfect. Now let's take this information that we got from here and paste it into our sheet. I've provided this sheet on the course notes, so just get out this sheet here with the with all the steps and fill in your redirect URI, client ID, and client secret. So we have it handy when we need it. So after you've filled in a redirect URI, client ID, and client secret into your worksheet, now we need to do one more thing, and that's URL encoding the redirect URI. The redirect URI will be a part of the query parameters of the authorization endpoint. And that's why we need to URL encode it. And for URL encoding, there are a couple of tools. You can just get the next best tool for URL encoding. There's this one here, which I like. You just take this parameter and URL encode it like that. And now you notice that all the colons and the slashes they now are replaced by special types of signs. So the colon is replaced by percent %3a and the slash is replaced by percent %2f, so forth. And that makes sure that your redirect URI can be part of a query parameter. So then we paste that result in here. Okay. So now we have basically filled out everything that we needed from the registration redirect URI, the encoded redirect URI, client ID, and the client secret. All right.